All right, here we go. I'll try to be quick on this one, but that, that, that never happened. So, uh, wearing the Sharky shirt today, was going to be talking about flow cycles and uh, how that works for Mihai Csikszentmihalyi and Stephen Kotler and Peter Diamandis, but decided to switch it in a different direction. We'll talk about maybe the first piece of the flow cycle because it relates to what I was going to talk about, which is while I'm wearing the Sharky shirt. Uh, I'll do props and respect to uh, Jim Nichols and his crew out at Sharky's in Liverpool, Central New York, bringing beach volleyball to the Northeast in a way that only he and his staff can do. And um, Beth is phenomenal too out there and just so many great people. But the point is like last night I was watching, also he's very much responsible for our oldest daughter getting the opportunity now to go play Division One beach volleyball in college. So. Uh, love you, Jim, and the crew. Anyways, um, as what, what we're talking about today, though, is um, we're going to kind of talk about that first piece of the flow cycle, which is where there's a lot of hard work. Why am I wearing the Sharky shirt? Because last night, this was more, no more, um, couldn't have been more apparent than it was in the AVP Beach um, match that was on TV. I forget what channel it was on TV now. It might have been might have been uh, NBC or something like that, sports or something. But uh, so it was on at like nine o'clock at night or something like that. Coming, coming uh, to you from Hawaii, and it was April Ross and Alex Kleiman versus Summer Ross and Sarah Hughes. Now the funny thing is, the first set they're talking, they're talking. You know, they're being positive. The the broadcasters are being positive about everybody, but they, um, you know, they they kept on commenting how Alex Kleiman hadn't been blocking at all and blah blah blah. Anybody who watched sports on TV, they all know. Like when somebody starts saying something about a streak, so like they said, oh, she's only had three or four blocks in this entire tournament, and um, and so Summer um, Summer Ross and Sarah Hughes won the first set. It was close though, but then April Ross and Alex Simon go back. They're they're meeting with their coach in between sets and stuff, and you see they're making the adjustments and they're they're being honest about what's going on. They're not getting upset. They're being positive. And they're just talking about, hey, let's have good energy. Let's go back out there, you know, blah, 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 blah. So they come back out. Now, the funny thing is, anytime you've seen a sporting event, Adam Vinatieri kicking, oh, he's hitting so many kicks in a row. Or somebody at the free throw line, they had so many free throws in a row. Or they've had so many, a hitting streak in softball or baseball. Or a scoring streak in hockey or lacrosse. Um, you, you name it, like, you get the point. Like, number of completions in a row for a quarterback. Number of, you know, points in a row for, you know, in soccer. So the point is these streaks that they talk about, then all of a sudden they have a way of going the other way. So they were talking about how Alex hadn't um, had a lot of success blocking, but then they did, they were nice enough to say, well, you know, we talked to their partner and April said she's not necessarily scoring on that, you know, on the block immediately, but she's making people divert and adjust their shots and that's helping us score. And eventually she's going to score on the blocks. Now we fast forward, boom, come out in the second set. What happens? Alex Kleiman is in a zone. I mean, if it was basketball, she'd have been raining threes like Steph Curry from way beyond the arc. Instead, it's volleyball. She's going up. She's stuffing everything that, you know, that Summer and Sarah have to offer. I, I don't know how many blocks she had, but it was four or five, like right in the first 15 points that they scored. And so, you know, what I'm saying is, is it like Jim Collins talks about, like get that flywheel going. Like she wasn't, she wasn't necessarily having success from like the broadcaster standpoint, but from her teammate standpoint, she knew that if she kept to it and she kept modifying, you know, and adjusting and stuck with the process, that eventually that flywheel would get going. And then when they needed it to actually like help her um, massively, boom, it did, and they ended up winning. You know, um, so April and Alex end up winning over Summer and Sarah. It was a great, it was a great match. But uh, the point is, and this is why I'm getting back to the Sharkies thing. Um, you know, we were told uh, early on uh, by almost everybody. You know, you you can't play beach volleyball in college from the Northeast, especially from like New York. And we've had other kids go and play. And then we were told, oh well, you can play, but you can't play at Division One. So now that's gonna change. And so like, so what? Somebody tells you you can't do something. But here's a big piece to this, though. You have to be a little bit stoic. You have to be a little bit Spartan. Like you have to be a little bit. Uh, you have to. You have to have stick to itiveness. You have to understand that whatever your goal is and whatever your dream is, just because you believe it doesn't mean anybody else is going to believe it. Also, doesn't mean that the universe is going to give you feedback initially that is um, uh, is has continuity with what your belief or what your goal is. Meaning, there's going to be contrast probably at first. 
And that doesn't mean to like that you're off course or that you're not doing the right things. You need to like we had a client who just because just because you made your decision finally and you're like, I'm all in. This is going to happen today. And then you get out there and you're like, boom, you're doing what you need to do and you fail and it doesn't work. And you fail 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 and you fail. Um, you know, you might have failed for the last decade, for the last year, for the last you know quarter, for the last month, for the last week. Uh, for yesterday, you might have failed. You might have failed on your last rep in the gym. That doesn't mean you're going to fail on the next rep, though. And that's the thing that's important. You need to sit down and really be honest about what happened. How did you fail? How did you succeed even when you failed? And then how can you make adjustments and then modify what you're doing and then move forward? And then if you don't succeed then, like that's fine. Like Just keep adapting, 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 and then boom. Just like Alex Kleiman out there in second set. Win, 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 win. She had so many blocks, it was ridiculous. She was reaching stuff like she was just going up and you could see like she was in, she was on a whole nother level. She was just reaching over to, boom. She was reaching over to wherever the ball was going to be. She was like, I think there was a couple times and then they're they were commenting how like, well, if you break a hand or something that affects how you're going to block. And so like, then they started kind of making excuses and, and sympathy and empathy and stuff like that. And then the next thing you know, just block, 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 block. Um, it was phenomenal. But so, and that's the point, like, what did you learn from the failure? Um, how can you improve or, or what can you change to make things better? What's great about that situation? Where is the gift in it? Um, how can you take action now to make the um, adjustments and then just keep on modifying it? Like, it's that simple. So like, that's the, that's the thing is like, I wanted to talk about the flow cycle, but at the same time, this is kind of the first aspect of the flow cycle. It's doing the work, the dirty work. Um, it doesn't even have to be dirty though, but for a lot of people, it feels like dirty work because they're not getting wins. You know, it's like, it's like, it feels like there's no reciprocity. It's like, I did this and I hoped it was going to create this situation. And it's almost like that gift that you give, um, to somebody who probably will never be able to return the favor other than the fact that you get a good feeling out of giving somebody something. So that is, so there is some reciprocity there, but not necessarily the way that it would ordinarily be. So the thing is, um, you have to be able to understand that it, you're not always going to get traction immediately. You know, you, you might, you know, be line locking your tires. Like I was watching a, a Hoonigan's uh, video the other day that Tony loves to watch. Um, and like the guy's spinning his wheels, spinning his wheels, and then there's smoke and you can't see anything. Like whew, everything's covered. Then the next thing you know, boom, he lets off the brake and whew, from out of nowhere, he just takes off because he got traction all of a sudden. And then, you know, and it's crazy. And then he's, whoo, he's drifting around the corner. Anyways, I don't get off topic because that happens all the time. But the point is, you will get traction when you get better leverage. So you might not have a really, really powerful why yet. That might be part of the problem. Maybe you don't have all the resources or you're not being resourceful as much as you should be. Maybe that's a piece of it. There's a lot of different pieces that could be, you know, missing here. And failing is also trying to figure out, okay, boom. Oh, where did this piece come from? Uh, it fell out of somewhere. Let me see how I can put it back. Where does that fit together? You know, again, the Tetris effect, like the more you look at it and kind of analyze where does this fit? Oh, wait, if I turn that on its head, it fits there. It goes sideways. Turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. The beauty of life, though, is you have more time than you realize, but not as much time as you act like sometimes. So like you act like there's always going to be a tomorrow unless like you want to just be, you know, upset with yourself with failing. If you want to give up, you'll be like, uh, I've already tried too much. This is taking too long. You haven't put forth your best effort. I'm telling you that right now. I know that because I see this missed all the time. The next piece is people talk about all the time, like failing. Uh, you're not mentally strong. You need to be more mentally strong. Mental strength is the belief that you will win. Maybe not now, but you will win eventually. That's mental strength. That's all you need to know about mental strength. The belief that you will win. I will win. I'm mentally strong. I will win. And that's more powerful than whatever short-term negative feedback that I get. Perceived negative feedback, okay? Because it's feedback. And what I do with it, you know, will impact what I'm able to then do in the future. So 
the thing that's the most important is I don't have to get caught up in the fact that something didn't go perfect today. It's not the end of the story. It's not the end of your story. Okay? You decide when you close the book. Okay? But you got to keep writing. If you stop writing, unless you're going to pause for a moment and reflect on the situation and what you learned from the last chapter and then how you're going to apply that moving forward and how it's going to like progress and become something better, you know, it, it's people give up in the middle of their own book. It's so, and they're, oh, we're going to start a different book. I, I want to start with a happy beginning. I got bad news for you. Happy beginnings. Um, or you know, thinking that the book's going to be wonderful the whole time, that's not usually the stories that people remember. That's not the people that other people gravitate towards. Usually, in order to be the hero, that hero usually has that pit that they reach. Okay, like boom, they drop into a pit, and then boom, they meet, have a meteoric rise up into the peak. That's how it works in the film because they only have an hour and a half. Um, so, but in life, often it isn't a meteoric rise. It's a up and down, up and down, up and down. It takes a long time. But then eventually they find that sweet spot and boom, it goes straight up to the peak, to the pinnacle. Okay. So the point is pit to peak, peak pit to pinnacle. Like it's not usually straight up. It's usually, you know, like that and then up. So you have to stay with it. Um, and the thing about, you know, about having that interesting story, that heroic show, story, that story that like when you're older, you'll love to look back and tell your kids and your grandkids about or the neighbor's kids or the neighbor's grandkids or whoever. Um, but the point is like creating that story, you know, that that's where like the juice is. And that's where like you need to get your strength from in order to make sure you push forward to be mentally strong and have that belief that you will win eventually. Think about that Stockdale paradox. I might not win tomorrow. Christmas might not be tomorrow. You know, whatever the story is, but eventually we'll get there. So the next piece is number three. This has nothing to do and kind of this, something to do with the other stuff, which is I hear people all the time um, that sign up for things to promote themselves or to promote their kids. And like before you go to promote yourself, make sure that you have something to promote. You need to know what your story is. And if you don't have a story yet, do not promote yourself. Okay. And, and this is like, the NCSA or CSA prep star or go big recruiting before you try to market yourself to colleges or your student athlete, are they prepared to be marketed to? This is so important. Are they prepared to be marketed to? Okay. If they're not, you know, if you're not like, if you don't have like what something, you know, something that somebody else is interested in yet, don't put yourself out there yet. You can create an account with these people, but don't push yourself out. Think about a first impression and, and how long it takes to like overcome that first impression if it wasn't a good first impression. That is really important to understand. You know, if you um, if you're not clear on what you're doing, also or like what your real strengths are, your weaknesses, you're not prepared to like answer those questions. And if you don't have some accolades and or like a, I'm first in my class or all this other stuff, don't put yourself out there yet. Do some research first, put in the work, build up the content, build up the storyline. <clears throat> you need to be something that's interesting and you have to have a, a, an incredible offer to and, and a value add to impact the schools that you're looking to attract. If you don't bring anything to the table, then they're not going to bring you to the table. Okay, so that's really important. Don't just throw stuff out there and hope it's going to stick on the wall when you don't have credentials and you don't have this, that, and the other, build up those credentials, make those connections, figure out how to be a better communicator, understand how to develop relationships, know how to communicate with somebody. Hello and yes, and this is me and blah, 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 shaking hands, looking straight in the eye. This is all really important. Understand how to be critical of yourself and evaluate yourself, but also be positive. And then talk about obstacles you've overcome and all this other stuff. But if you haven't had any obstacles, if you haven't had any situations you can draw upon in, <clears throat> in a situation where you can have a conversation about how you're unique and what you can create and what you can bring to their team and their program and their family. And that's really, really important. And, and also while you're doing that, you can still be doing the research on the schools. So I hope this was helpful. One was talking about, um, you know, overcoming failure. Two was mental strength. And three was marketing stuff. 
okay? Sorry it went too long, and again, thanks to Jim Nichols and the Sharky's crew, and um, I hope you guys have a great day, and if, if you like volleyball or even athletics, you should go and um, pull that up on the AVP site and watch those, uh, the men's and women's final was phenomenal. So uh, have a great day, and sorry that was a little longer than expected.